Hi, welcome to a bit of crafting with Kathy with a Christmas theme. Today we're going to be creating a jelly paint background but on a metallic card which is a little bit different and then you're going to be using some of our Christmas stamps to create a lovely soft scene with the dove. So the stamps that we'll be using is mainly the dove and joy to the world but I'm also going to use a little bit of wattle in there to create some background stamping as well. The inks that we'll work with, because not all inks will dry on a metallic card, so the inks we'll work with is Versamark for our embossing, and then some of the Catherine Pooler dye inks, uh, some of my favourite colours as <laughs> you may know, Daydream and Skylight, Pink Champagne, Sangria, and maybe a bit of Juniper Mist, I'm not sure with that one yet, we'll see which one, whether the card looks like it needs it. Okay, we're going to be creating our background with the Dilutions Jelly Plate. And I'm going, this is the set of three. I'm going to be using the larger size one because I actually want to cover all of my background card rather than just doing a, an accent piece on it. Now here's our metallic card. So this is a metallic cream cardstock. You can see if I move it around with Matthew zooming in there, the, the natural sheen to the page. So this can handle having a little bit of water used on it, but uh, not designed for water colouring, but to do a background where we've got the jelly plate when spritzing with water, that will work fine. So I'll just move my notepad out, my scratch pad out of the way and bring in the jelly plate. And I'm going to use the Dilutions uh, brayer for applying our inks. And I want a really soft look to start with, so I'm going to just apply the Skylight and Pink Champagne first, and then we'll use the other colours for some shading afterwards. So let's start with our softest one, the Pink Champagne. And I do want a fairly big amount of coverage on the plate so that when I put my card on, it covers to all edges of the card. So let's just grab a little bit of ink. Now I'm not doing any particular pattern. An earlier card I did, we actually did it in uh, stripes so you've got more of a, a sunsetty look. Here I actually want just a mottled background pattern so I'm going to apply the pink champagne all over but in areas and just going over it so that I make sure that I smooth out any hard edges that I might have got when I picked up the ink off the pad. Now we'll pick up some of the skylight and again just putting it down and then just go back over and just smoothing it out, making sure that I've got a fairly well along the jelly plate. Now I can clean my brayer later because I can actually pop it down with those little feet will stop that ink getting onto my work surface or anything. And I'm going to spritz this with some water. And I'm also, I've got some shimmer dust, some uh, peacock shimmer dust that I've put into a container with water. So it's quite a bit of water with, and I'm just dripping it everywhere on myself, which is going to be lovely because shimmer dust stains beautifully. <laughs> so I've mixed it with water and I only put two tiny little scoops of powder into that and that will give us enough color. I then grab my fan brush and I'll just have another small brush handy. Grab the fan brush and then just Tap across my brush here till I get some speckles happening. Doesn't have to be all over, doesn't have to be really big blobs because that will smoosh out when we put our card on. Now I'm going to carefully pop my lid back on here and then give it a little clean with the paper towel before I move it to one side because again we're leaking turquoise everywhere. just clean that and pop it to one side. That'll teach me to, to not have the lid half off ready to go and then give it a shake before I start. Yeah. Okay, so now we're, we're spritzed with water, we've got our bit of shimmer dust on there. Now I could lay the card down on the jelly plate, but um, I quite like to watch what's happening. So I'm gonna pop my card down, lift my plate up and lay it onto it. And we'll see what happens. I can already see we've got some nice blending of colour happening there. Now let's pick it up. If you do find you get a little bit of a blob of ink there, just grab your bit of paper towel and just dab that off. Because we're wanting it to be quite soft, 
and also that's come out quite strong because it's where the colours have mixed together. So just a little dab and then we put that to one side to dry. Can you see the beautiful mottling of colours which is from the spritzing with the water and you get little bits of deeper colour where we put the shimmer dust but you can see that natural shine that the card's got. Now again if I was making doing card making at home, particularly when I'm doing my Christmas cards and I want to create a few backgrounds, I would actually use what's on the gel plate and what's on my craft mat and make a few more backgrounds. But we don't have time for that today, so we're just going to wipe that clean. And again, I'll pop my gel plate out of the way and give that a clean later. Okay, let's bring up the scratch pad. And that background will take a couple of moments to dry. So I have got one that I've already dried and done the next stage on. So the next stage was to grab our Dove and our Joy to the World, stamp them with the Versamark ink and emboss them with white. So now we're going to create some shading around this. And I'm going to do that with my Sangria and with the Daydream. But first things first, I'm going to place a little mask that I've cut using the uh, Paper Roses circle dies. I've cut a mask out of acetate and I'm going to pop that over the top of the dove. So we're creating a look like he's flying across a moon or a sun. And then with my brush and some Sangria ink, ink the end of the brush, tap it off on my scrap a bit and then start shading on the acetate and then out onto the card a little bit. If you're not sure whether you're getting enough colour, just don't take the acetate off completely, but just lift it up a little bit and you'll see, oh yeah, we're getting plenty on there. So keep doing a little bit of shading. Do be careful though, because the ink will come off the acetate mask onto your hands, so don't then put your fingers onto your card. Make sure you give your hands a bit of a clean once you've been doing this shading. And I'm just turning my card around, both to make it easier for me, but also so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's lift the mask off. And that's looking very pretty already. And now I'm just going to give my hands a spritz with water and wipe them off on the, a bit of paper towel just as I said, so I'm not putting fingerprints on this lovely delicate card. Okay, the next stage, I'm going to shade around the outside edge with the Sangria again. And then we're gonna add a bit of background stamping to it. If we wanted to, we could add a little bit of shading where the words are as well, because it, the darker the colour is, the more that white embossing will stand out. Or we might choose to leave it looking really delicate. At the moment, I'm going to leave it looking delicate till I decide whether it needs a bit more. Let's grab our Daydream ink. And I might put that mask back. I'm going to give the mask a bit of a wipe off with some paper towel. It'll get stained from the inks, that's fine. What I don't want is loose ink coming off on my hands. I'm gonna add some Daydream in there as well. So let me just grab my turquoise brush. So this is the number 10 size future brushes that I'm using. So I'll position that over where we did the Sangria. And this time I'll pick up some of the Daydream, tap it off on my scrap, and now I'm going to shade out a little bit further out than what I did with the Sangria. Which may mean I need to actually touch up the Sangria as well. Let's have a bit of a look at that. Or I may just go, that's pretty cool. Okay, again, give my hands a wipe. Now let's use our 
We're going to need a big acrylic block for this. Our wattle stamp, which I'll get Matthew to get a close up on the stamps again so you can see that wattle one. While I quickly grab it. Got it. Matthew's just about to stop recording going, are we going to need to do an edit here or is she going to find her stamp? But no, we've got him. It was used yesterday and popped away. So I popped that on our big acrylic block. So our wattle, I'm going to mainly use some of these frondy edge bits. Not so much the heavier stuff, I want more just the frondy bits. So we can pick those out and just stamp that around the edge of our card. And actually, I'm just going to do the first one stamped off on the scrap because everything's so delicate. I think we might just do it that way. I don't want it to come on too strong. That's very pretty, isn't it? I love it when an idea works. I do plan these, Matthew. little bit, I want to get a little bit different frondies, but still the gentler ones, the more open ones. And you can see I'm going, bringing it into the card a little bit more at the bottom. So we just need something to fill that bit in. When you're doing second generation stamping, one of the worst things you can do is halfway around or even the last stamp, forget that you're doing second generation and going straight onto the card and getting one really dark on. If I did that, I'd then actually stamp over a couple of the others around the place and spread out the dark ones. But no, I remembered each time to stamp off on my scrap first and get the second generation stamping. That is so nice and delicate. We're just going to get our lint-free cloth and just give a little buff over the embossed areas there, just to bring that back to white again. That's so nice. So just that little bit of shading, but with the mottliness of the, of the backing color. Looks really good. Now, I wanna create a background card for this one. So I've done a couple of ideas that we can test out what we like the look of best. This was, this was swiping the ink pads directly onto the card and I wanted to see both Sangria and the Daydream to see which color worked better or both. Whereas on this side, I've done just a little bit of shading with Sangria. So let's have a look and see what our backing card is going to, which one's going to look better. See that's not standing out a lot from what we've already, from the edging that we've done here. Whereas that's a bit more dramatic. And maybe just the daydream colour, not the sangria. So I'm going to actually darken this edge on this card a bit more with the sangria and do our backing card with the daydream. So sometimes it's not bad to do a little bit of a test piece just to make sure you're happy with your colours. So we're going to grab our daydream ink pad and just swipe direct to paper. So we're just going to drag it across our card. These are wonderful juicy ink pads. So you can just drag it along and you'll get plenty of colour on there. If you find you've got a few marks, drag marks, that you don't like, you can always get your, little, your water spray and give it a little spritz and that's just going to help everything just bead a bit and then smooshy in together. So it's just going to make that to have, because they're a water reactive ink, it's just going to create a little bit of an effect there and that will help cover any drag marks from the ink pad. Let's have a look at that looking at it with it. I think that's going to work really well. So let's let that dry, grab our sangria and our sangria brush and give our main card a little bit more shading. Deepen that off a little bit more. Now, if you're not confident with your shading, you can come on with just some circles. 
but if you're wanting it close to the edge, often doing it with this, the smooshing action works really well. If you're finding that you're needing to soften it, take some of the ink off your brush and then we can just come in and do some circles there just to blend that out a little bit. Different card stocks react differently with the inks. Sometimes you might find some cards, um, the ink doesn't dry as quickly and so you might get uh, a bit of a line that needs blending. Other, other cards are more absorbent, so you've actually got to put more ink on. This one I'm finding because it's the metallic card, it's not as absorbent, so I do need to do a little bit of extra smooshing out of my edges there. But take a bit of colour off the brush and just do some circles just to blend that out. So you can see from where we started, even though we had edged the card, how much deeper we've now made that. Now by making the outer edges darker, it's actually going to have the effect that it'll make the lighter areas pop out and look more dramatic. More dramatic in a delicate way. Does that work? Let's have a look at our backing card. Has it dried? We're just going to run over that with the heat gun and just make sure it's really dry. And we've got a couple of spots that are being resistant. If you've got time, you can just leave that to dry itself. Um, I don't want to spend the time to wait for that. You can see where we've done the water droplets, how it's created a lovely pattern in there. Now because I don't want to get any ink smooshing over our beautiful card, I'm going to move my scratch pad out of the way before I start putting double sided tape on and layering all this up. On. Now if you're not sure about getting your card straight when you're doing your layering, one way is to actually remove your backing of your double sided tape in stages. I tend to do a quick check of my card and just see what borders I had allowed for myself. This is if I've pre-cut the card to size. Quite often I'll make um, if I'm, layering, if I'm layering a piece and, I'm, and I was just leaving it just the cream, I could actually just position that on my card, stick it down, and then trim the other edges to size. And that's an easy way of doing, getting your card to size. But when I've got a piece that I want to pre-cut so that I can play with it, I've then got to remember, well, how much border did I allow? So I could take my tape off and just, you've got a little bit of time with tape if you don't press it down just to maneuver your card around. But if you're really not sure, what you can do is just pick off some of your tape and with the side pieces, just fold the tape out to the edge there. And we'll take off this one. And then we can actually use the edge that's still got tape on it and use that to get all our positioning. And get that all right while we've, before we start pressing it down. So now I can place it down and now I use the pressure on the bottom bit where the tape's been removed. The only trick is before you pull those side bits out, make sure you lift this one up and take the top bit of tape off. Take the backing off that one. And is it going to pick off for me or do I have to go out of camera shot to be able to get hold of it? It's being rude, isn't it? So with that there, we can then pull our side bits up and then pop your card down and just smooth it all down and we're nice and straight. How pretty is that? Oh, I love those colours. Now, but what I last bit I want to do is I want to add, we can put glossy accents on our dove would look gorgeous 
or just some glitter. Now what colours have I got? I think I'm just going to use some Stardust. One of the true and tried colours. Just giving it a bit of a squeeze on my bit of paper towel, make sure it's all running well. And let's just, we'll start with the wings and see how much we want to do. So I'm just going to smooth it out. Or feather it out. And see. So I'm using the nozzle to spread it. Just so we can see, do we want the whole dove covered? Or just his wings and his tail feathers? So if you want more heavier glitter, give it a squeeze as you run it along. If you want less, just flick it with the nozzle. So you're feathering on the feathers. I'm feathering on the feathers, yes. Just pushing that back a bit. So that's really gorgeous. So we want a little bit on his head maybe as well. Or we could just do an eye. Yeah, let's leave it there. Look, Matthew, I'm stopping with the glitter before I've covered the whole thing. That makes him proud of me. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So we've got beautiful hands and we've got a gorgeous card. So this is with our lovely Catherine Pooler inks and we've used the softer colours for our background and then our deeper colours around the edge and let the white embossing powder act as a resist to the inks. Okay, thank you very much for watching this one. I really, I love how that, those colours work together. It's so pretty. So it's Christmassy, but it's not our traditional Christmassy colours. It's just a, it's a pretty Christmas one. We like pretty. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel, and that way you get notifications when we're loading up new clips. And please pop on over to our website. We'll list all the products that we've used in the description uh, after this video and you'll be able to have, pop on over and have a look at some of the the gorgeous christmas stamps we've got okay thank you very much for watching we'll see you again next time